Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webcast today. We have Barb Nash, who will be taking us through working with Bill of Materials and Autodesk Vault Professional. So, Barb, I will pass the floor over to you. Thanks, Green. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Today, I will be using the Chapter 9 material from the Autodesk Vault Professional 2018 Data Management for Autodesk Inventor Users Guide. And shown here are some of the learning objectives for the chapter. Uh, the objectives include learning the methods for creating new items, so new item and assign slash update item commands, and modifying and comparing bombs, and then learning the different ways that um, Autodesk allows you to, Autodesk Vault allows you to share the BOM information. So here we have the three commands, save BOM view, BOM export, and BOM report. And this is just a visual agenda of what we'll be going through today. So I'll start with an introduction to items and bombs. Then we'll get into creating and viewing and modifying and then comparing bombs and uh, then with uh, finishing off with the differentiating between the ways of sharing the bomb information. And there will be demos throughout. Okay, um, items and bombs. Um, now some of you may be using Vault already and, and have an idea of what an item is in Autodesk Vault. Um, others may not be aware of that term and may be used to other PLM systems. Um, so the item in Autodesk Vault Professional is the object that is associated to each inventor part or inventor assembly, uh, making up the bomb. So all items have a bill of material, um, even an inventor part. So if you're used to the other PLM systems, it can be thought of similar or equivalent to the Anopia or Team Center or Windchill part. And then here displayed is the item master. And this is the list of all items in the vault. And you can select the item master tab at any time to access that item master. Okay, and item details can be viewed by selecting the bill of materials tab, either in the preview pane as shown here, um, and I'll show you uh, also how you can get it by double clicking. But uh, this um, is really this view, the Bill of Materials tab view, is also called the BOM view. So I'll be referring to it as BOM view as well. And uh, so if we double click on an item in the item master, this edit item dialog will show up in its new window. And um, again, there's a bill of materials tab that will need to be selected to take a look at your bomb. So that was the intro, and now we're into creating and viewing the bomb. So there are a couple of methods of creating items and bombs in Autodesk Vault Professional. Uh, so the one on the left, the assign update method involves the inventor design files stored in Vault then being assigned to items um, in order to create that BOM. So in this method, the inventor design files are created first. And then alternatively, on the right, items can be created first from scratch in the item master using the new item command and then associated with the design files or not even associated with any files. Um, so this is known as the BOM first workflow. And I'll be showing each in a moment, uh, but before we do that, um, so when using the first method or the assign update method, we start with the design bomb. So we have all the files that have been created in Inventor, and then when in Vault, that information from the design bomb is translated into the associated Vault item bomb, I'll call it, from uh, each inventor part and assembly. So it basically translates this BOM information from inventor into vault. And then the step to be able to do both, uh, this is the first method, assigning items to files, is that within your project explorer or within your list of files in vault, 
you would right click on or you can highlight uh, as many files as you want here and right click and pick assign update item. And then the items are automatically created in the item master. It's as easy as that. And then to uh, access it any, any time, click the item master and up comes the list in the item master. So those are now all the items. The files still exist in Project Explorer. Okay, for the second method, so creating using the new item, so creating an item from scratch. Um, the design files may or may not exist already, but um, definitely in this case we're starting with the item. Nothing's been associated yet. And in this case we click the item master, we click new, okay, I'm going to advance here. Then we click new item up in the top left and then select a category it prompted, but most likely you'll have that set up and uh, you can see the list of types of categories here. Um, so with um, your first uh, bomb first type methodology um, or after the fact you may create a, a lot of purchased items. Um, so purchased items such as adhesives or um, paint or even software is bundled in there. So uh, this is uh, uh, an example of what you might do with this new item functionality. Okay, and then in the, in what comes up immediately is this item dialog, and you would then enter required values for things like title, description, unit, and then if you were to, to assign any files, you would just drag them and drop them in, in this area here. So it could be design files, it could be inventor files, it could be any files that you would like associated to this item. Okay, I've added this one in here. So just viewing bonds in general, um, we've heard where you click the item master first and then bring up the uh, bomb by either picking the bill of materials tab in the preview pane or in that edit item dialog. Um, and you'll, and we'll be seeing this in the demo, but I wanted to point this out first so you can look for it in the demo. Um, you'll see a list of uh, bottom bomb status icons um, you'll see the various ones that are shown here in the table that mean something, and they can help you uh, manage your BOM more effectively. So, you know, if you're wondering if you can't edit something, maybe, you know, you can see uh, it's not able to be edited because it doesn't have this icon. Um, you know, this one may come up, item is created, but it has not been saved yet, so you'll know, oh, I've got to still save it. So. This can be uh, definitely helpful to know. And I thought I'd also mention here, and I'll show it also in the demo, is um, if you have a huge bomb, you can uh, do a search in that bomb, and it may not be that obvious right away, but you would just right click and select Show Find Panel, and then do your search. Okay, so I am going to pop up Vault here. And what I'm first going to do is create a bomb with the assign update item method. So right now, there, this is my mold assembly. Um, these are the files in the Project Explorer. There's no item for no items set for them yet. And so I'm going to highlight them all, right click, and pick assign update item. And it does its thing. It's done. So I now go into item master and I find my final mold assembly. And I can double click on it and it brings up this edit item dialog that I mentioned before. And this is uh, the general tab. What I'd like to look at is the bill of materials tab. And it looks like I see my icons that were in that table. So everything was 
turned off in this case. Oh, and I need to do the edit. <laughs> I see my edit icon, and I'll just turn them all on for now, and I'll talk about those more later when we're doing the uh, modifying bombs section. So you can see here I have my bomb listed, and I pick save if I want to keep those changes. Oh, and I'll just, um, before I do anything, maybe I'll just show this fine panel too um, so that you can see that I can just simply search like I'm used to searching and search it uh, in that manner. Okay, now I'm just going to not show it. So that is the first method. So assign update item. I had the design files and fault first. Um, I did the assign and the items were created. Now I'm going to close this. I'm still in Item Master. I'm going to show the new item from scratch. So I select the new button, basically one and the same new item or new item bu button. It prompts me for the category. I'm going to pick purchase in this case. And for the title and description, I'm going to just click paint. And you'll see there a number is assigned automatically. And here's the drag and drop files here area. So if I did have something that I wanted to associate with this item, I could just drag and drop it in there at this time. Whoops. Okay. And then I will save. Okay, so that was the demo for creating and viewing bombs. Uh, now we'll get into modifying bombs. Okay, so as we've seen already, we have the edit button and we have the save button. So as soon as you pull this um, edit item dialog box up, after double clicking on an item, you'll need to pick edit if you want to make changes. And then after making the changes, you'll pick save. Okay, so you're probably wondering what things can I change? So here we have changing the quantity. So the steps for changing the quantity um, are shown here. So you can see the various uh, columns of information that we have there, quantity being one of them. And we simply click in the field, the um, row, uh, the quantity for the row that you want to change, and enter the new value, and then pick Save. So the one note to keep in mind here, so the view must be set to multi-level. So here we have um, the different structure views that you can show, so multi-level being one of them. There's also the first level and parts level as well. So that um, you will need to make sure is set to multi-level. Okay, and then modifying bombs and rows. What can you do with rows? Um, so here we have in the top left the ability to add a row, and so you would just click on a row in the bomb, right-click, add row. You can either pick an existing item or from a new item, so create a new item, and create uh, another row there, and like that. And then we have delete rows, and again, just click on the row that you want to delete, right-click, and remove row. And then bottom left there, reorder rows. Um, so you can just simply drag and drop. You could change the ordering number, but um, also you can just simply drag and drop the row up. So in this case, you just highlight, drag into the area where you want to insert that row into. And then toggle rows on and off. We kind of saw that a little bit. Um, so here we've got the the light bulbs that show what is on and what is off, so white being off, yellow being on. And you'll see the significance of that also as we get into sharing the bomb information, but uh, that is what you can also do. So depending on if you want to just send certain things to perhaps a supplier or just um, be able to control that, send these toggling 
uh, rows on and off is, is something very important to you. You can also um, just show on rows only or off rows only, as well as all rows. And other things, um, I put a note there, um, so other things you can modify are you can group bomb rows and you can also even copy a row from one location to another. So really the modifying within Vault Professional is quite comprehensive, quite powerful. Um, so a lot of things you can do within that uh, edit item dialog box. So I will show it now. Go back into our item master here. So again, I'm going to double click on the final mold assembly, pick bill of materials, and then pick edit. So let's say we wanted to change the quantity of the fasteners. This is something that we might want to do. So I'm just going to double click, type in the number of new number of fasteners. The quantity update there in blue. I'm um, not going to save just yet. So first, let's say we want to remove something. So let's remove this bottom plate. We're about to remove one bomb row. Yes. So it's gone there. And let's try this turn off and on rows. Let's say we want to turn off the grip handle turned now the light bulb to white and we pick save and the bomb saves. Okay. Close that. So, so that's just you know some things um, that you can do uh, but basically you can um, when you're in edit mode uh, change any of these properties uh, for the most part. Um, you can also change the columns so it's similar to what you're used to within the Project Explorer, uh, Vault Explorer. You can customize the view and do your fields the way you would like. Um, as we get into exporting the data uh, and saving the bomb view, this is something that you may want to do um, because then it will match with what the output is. Okay, so back to the presentation here. Um, so that was modify. Now we're on to compare. So you've probably heard about the bomb compare. Um, so compare bomb, used to compare the bomb of two different items or a version of a bomb with the displayed revision or different versions even of the same item. So in step number one, we select the items or values from these two fields. So that's what you need to do first. And then the second thing is we just simply pick compare. And then on the next slide, we have what those differences display. So the difference between the two bombs or the two values that I had chosen from those drop down lists display. And there's this legend at the bottom here displaying what the colors mean. So there's the blue font, there's the blue bold font, and the red strike through. So we've got the bold, blue bold font here. So the values of individual properties are different. So you can see here that they are different, um, or in this case, they're different. Um, so and then uh, the blue font, either you know, the row was added or toggled on in the displayed bomb, but not in the comparison bomb. Or the row has an item now, but was a bomb component in the comparison bomb. And then the red strike through is that the row does not exist or it's toggled off in the displayed bomb, so the one that we're in, that, that, that's showing in the bomb view. Okay, so I'll just do a quick um, comparison of that. So again, I just double click, bring that up, pixel and materials tab, and I have my compare. Um, so in this case, since I haven't created different revs, um, I will just pick, you know, here I've got this, um, this uh, item, or I could just do a search. I'll just compare. It's not going to give the best results, but anyway, you'll get the idea. So you basically define your different values from these pull-downs, 
and then pick compare. So you can see here, we've got the red strike through, so now you know what that's all about. So basically these things didn't exist in the current or displayed bomb. So that's compare bomb. Okay, and here you now we move on to the share and export. And those three commands that I mentioned before is what we're going to be going through. So uh, just thinking back, so we've got the um, first one was save bomb view, bomb report, and bomb export. So the first one, save bomb view. Uh, so when you're in that item dialog, that's edit item dialog, and in the bill of materials tab, and viewing your bomb, you would pick file, save, bomb, view. And then you would select a destination and name for the Excel file. So pretty straightforward. So what you see is um, what you'll see in the bomb view, and I'll do an example after I describe the other two. And so it's bomb report in this case. Um, there are predefined templates already uh, provided with Autodesk Vault. So the first step there, uh, again, pick the uh, Bill of Materials tab, and then your bomb structure drop down list that we saw before, um, you would pick one of those. So depending on what you want in your report, uh, you would pick what you want. And then, so there we go. So and then right-click on any item in the list and select bomb report. So um, this is the, the top level, pick bomb report, and select the bomb template that matches the selected structure, and then click OK, and out comes the report. So in this case, um, this is the multi-level. I know I'm showing uh, parts only highlighted, but this is actually an example of the multi-level. So again, I'll, I'll do an example of that in the demo. Okay, and bomb export, this one is very powerful and this one is probably most used if you're connecting to another system or want something that is very specific and configurable. So um, in this case, we select the um, top level or the level that you want, in, in, in this case the top level, um, right click and then pick bomb export and you'll get a export wizard and be prompted for the various formats and what fields you want exported. Uh, but in this case, um, it only exports out the rows that are toggled on. So that's one of the big differences. So I'll show that, but uh, yeah, that's um, a big difference. In the other two, um, all rows were exported um, with indicators on which ones were toggled on and off. So in summary, here are the differences between the bomb sharing methods. So each have their purpose. Um, so save bomb, uh, you saw where it basically matches the bomb view and um, you can export into Excel or CSV format and it exports all rows. And then the bomb report, you can use the supplied templates or create your own to uh, create a nice report. And then bomb export, if you really want to go with something configurable, you maybe want only certain rows to be output because then you'll be sending that on to a supplier or another system. And uh, that, that one has that ability then. So that's that. And now I will bring up Vault again. Okay, so first, um, again, I will actually I'm going to just use the one here just in case. Um, okay, so bill of material tab. We pick file, save bomb view. Okay, I did have some examples here, but I will make it the third one. Does it export or save? And I'm just going to, on the other screen here, 
bring up that save bomb view three. And you can see here that yes, it does show everything that I saw over here. Um, you know, with the same look and feel of it, uh, so the same um, columns, same properties showing. And I mentioned here um, on and off bomb row, so it does output everything for both the on and off rows. Okay, so that is that one. Um, okay. So the next bomb export. So this was the one that only does the toggled on one. So let's take a look at what's on here. Right click here, uh, bomb export, and you can see um, that it only has those ones, yeah, the ones that are uh, in yellow showing. Um, we can specify a certain format, so CSV, um, TXT, or DWF, or XML. Um, we specify what we want. I'm going to call it bomb export 2. Click next. Okay, so I had the mapping already set here, um, but you can drag and drop anything you want into there, um, which you know which uh, properties that you want in the export. Um, the big thing to remember here is that export is available here, but if you don't have the number, then it's going to be grayed out. So just keep in mind that that you need the number to be able to export. So I'm going to pick export, and it looks like this is what it's got, and it exported out that information. Okay, and the last one, uh, bomb report. So again, I will just pick, right click, I mean, and pick bomb report. This is a predefined template. I'm just going to select that one. And up comes the report. So that was the multi-level template that I used and comes up right away. So that's bomb report. So I think, yeah, that concludes the um, the end of the, the lecture material, I'll call it. And so I have this quiz here. Corrine mentioned it. And, um, <laughs> yeah. I and did. I worry. warned everyone. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It's voluntary and it's really short. So, um, so there's just a few questions just to kind of summarize a couple of tricky points um, having to do with this topic. Um, so I will just generate it here. So just give me a few minutes. Or not, not a few minutes, but just a couple of minutes. Um, I think the best thing for everyone to do is, um, since we're not doing an official poll, but she's going to ask the questions, you can put your answer in the chat window. I think that the options are like, what, A, B, C, D? It is multiple choice, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. And then I can, uh, I can monitor that and let you know what everyone thinks. Sounds great. Hope everyone's ready. Okay. Okay. So I'll read out the question here. So when items are created in the item master first and then associated with design file second, it is known as the bomb first workflow. True or false? So if you can take a moment and just put uh, A or B or true or false in there, that would be great. Into the chat window or Q&A. Okay, yep, I see some coming up here in chat. I'm just gonna see. Anyone? Oh, some people are putting in the Q and A, which is fine. So either or, I'll just jump back and forth. And I guess the majority. We'll go with the majority. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, we do have, we've got people answering on both. Okay. But it looks like the majority here is A. They're saying it's true. Okay. Yeah. And that wasn't that tricky, but... Uh, That's I'll the correct that. answer? Okay. Correct. So let's get it. <laughs> okay. So click anywhere to get uh, to continue. So the second question here, um, in order to make changes to a bill of materials, what do you need to do? So we're in that bill of materials tab. And I'm trying to make changes, but nothing's working. What do I need to do? For this one, if you can just put A, B, C, or D. Okay, so the, they're coming in here. Let me just check the Q&A. Okay, we're getting a few different answers, but it looks like, take, take your final guess here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got quite a few different answers. I, I, we've had people answer B, C, and D, but most people are answering uh, C. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> are they getting it right? <laughs> yeah, it is a little tricky, but uh, when you use it enough, um, definitely, yeah, you'll get into knowing that you need to pick that edit in the top left first. So that's correct. The next good. question is um, a bill of materials can only be edited when it is in the multi-level structure view. True or false? This one is a little tricky. Okay, I'm seeing some answers here. Again, I'm seeing from both true and false, but it does look like we have one that I had it in a note on one of the slides, if that helps. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay, I'm just looking here. I've got most people here are saying A, so most of them are saying true. Yes, that is correct. Good. Yes. So again, yeah, if you can't seem to do any editing, um, maybe you know at one time or another you've changed that structure and uh, you need to change it back to multi-level structure view. And the last one, uh, to save a bomb to a file that shows only the rows that are toggled on, use the what command. Bomb export, save bomb view, multi-level, or bomb report. Okay, put your answers in the chat, or again, you can use Q&A. Looks like we're getting some answers in here. Again, we're getting a few different ones, but I think we have an overwhelming response here. Well, <laughs> it's hard to say. Let me go back up to chat. Uh, looks like most people are answering B. Barb. Okay. Yeah, B for Barb. A few people have put in C. I never gave the answers to you. Maybe I should have. I just yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, and then, well, you know what it's stuff because I'm going A, B, C. I'm going, is this, which question are we on? But I'm looking at the time here. I, so, and I may have, a. you know, I switched the order when I did the demo, but um, bomb export is actually oh. the one. So oh. that. Someone did get that. Tony got it. He got okay. A. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah. But again, yeah, you know what I'll do um, is have that summary posted in an upcoming blog so that it is kind of like a quick reference. Um, just, you know, it may be handy, but yeah, bomb export does um, really look at what you have toggled on and off. And so A is the answer. And that's the end. So congratulations, everyone. Excellent. <laughs> Chris, thank you. People were paying attention and they were learning. <laughs> Okay. So I guess I don't know where to go here. So yeah, back to um, the presentation. Um, let me just get this out of the way. Um, okay. So um, yeah. So the next slide here. So really, um, you know, just in conclusion. Um, so I, I gave you an overview of uh, bombs. Um, so creating, modifying, comparing, and uh, exporting or sharing bombs. Um, so really, you know, there have been several changes recently with the bomb functionality, not in 
2018, but just in earlier versions, and it really is a very powerful tool. Um, so I encourage you to explore it. Um, and uh, yeah, that really concludes what I wanted to talk about there. And then here on the screen is what we have coming up and what we have out for the Autodesk Vault student guides. So that chapter, again, was from the top one. So Autodesk Vault Professional 2018 Data Management for Inventor Users. And it is strictly for inventor users, not administrators. Um, so that includes the pr uh, professional functionalities, the items and bonds, in addition to change orders. Um, so that um, that book, and it's now released. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Vault Basic, and the, basically the Essentials books that are for both administrators and users. So there's both um, administrator functionality in there as well. So um, the Basic is out, um, or just about to be released here in May, and then the others are scheduled for the summer as well. And then the Autodesk Bus uh, Vault Custom Courseware is. Um, an option also for clients um, who are really looking for um, a training offering, either instructor-led or e-learning format that really is suited to um, your own processes, your own environment, so the interface and um, yeah, roles and you know, change order management processes. So that is that one. And uh, we've included quizzes in the e-learning option, so similar to what you saw there. Um, with those quiz questions, um, we can suit those to a client's needs as well. And there's there's not only the multiple choice, but there's some dragging and dropping, matching or sequencing questions uh, just to, to kind of change it up and make it engaging for the users. So that's all I had for that slide. I guess I'll change Excellent. it over to you. Kareem, did you want anything, or did you want to say anything more about this? I don't, I, other than the fact that we came up with a very long title for that book. <laughs> I know, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, wow, that is an like, awful. You know but, what, I can, you know what, if I could just mention why we did that, actually why we kept it that way was before we did have that guide for Vault Basic functionality only, so mm. we didn't want to change it completely for those who were used to it. Um, with the Vault Basic functionality. So basically it's the same guide but with added chapters that include now the, the Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional functionality. So um, yeah, so just Excellent. to explain that, yeah. Now you can go, I think, to the next slide. I just wanted to explain to everyone who is new to Ascent that all of those you know, titles, those books you just showed us, plus all of the other books that we offer from Ascent are available in the following format. So you know, I won't go through, read every single bullet here, but just so you can see at a glance everything that we offer. So depending on your learning style, how you prefer to learn or what your situation is, you could be an instructor, maybe you're a student, uh, maybe you're a large organization or a school that needs to order many, many copies of the book, we can help you out. So we do have um, our printed books, which continue to be probably the most popular style that we do offer. We call them student guides, but it's essentially a, a printed copy of the book. And those are available to you on our e-store, Ascent e-store, but we also sell now on Amazon as well. So if you are an Amazon Prime member in the U.S., I think, I think all of our books qualify for free shipping through that, which is a fantastic feature. And, uh, and you can get to the book then usually within a few days. So you can check us out there on Amazon. We have e-books. We have video-enhanced e-books. Uh, we have e-learning bundles. As well, if you want to learn a, you know, a whole series of you know, AutoCAD or Inventor courses, you can get them for you know, a reduced rate by buying the bundle. We also have instructor tools for many of our books that we offer. Again, as I mentioned, if you're teaching the class, those are really handy. It gives you the timing suggestions for, uh, for teaching the class, the answers to the questions that are within the guide, so which is very helpful. And our digital site licenses. So that's where you're printing a lot of copies uh, of a book. We're talking hundreds of copies that you might need. Then we give you the access to the, um, the license files to print your own materials. So some people like to, to do that option. They can customize the cover and do other things like that. So we've got all this available. And if you go to the next slide, Barb, we'll just show everyone where you can find us online. So our ascentestore.com is our uh, our online store. You can also access the store through our website, which is ascenced.com. There, I've put that at the bottom. 
If you're more familiar with our website, you could go to the website, and from there you can link right through to our e-store, and you can link right through to Amazon as well. That's the easiest way to find us on Amazon, is going right through our website and finding the course, uh, you know, the software that you use. So if you're interested in Vault, you go right over to Courseware, Vault, and then see all the titles that we have available. And as you know, Barb, Barb mentioned, we have one available right now for 2018 with more to come, and then we have lots for 2017, and earlier titles are all there. And then you can click through. You can also get sample chapters, and table of contents for any of the courseware that we write is online, and you just have to uh, find the courseware you're looking for and fill out the information, and, and uh, it'll be accessed there for you. So there we are. We're a fun group. Unfortunately, I didn't have another picture of Barb in here. <laughs> Barb is at the front. So that's me being very silly at the end there at Autodesk University um, from a couple of years ago. So our phone number and our email is here. Please do reach out to us if you have um, any questions at all especially if you think of something after this webcast that you wanted to ask Barb specifically, you can send that to the feedback at ascentED.com, the AscentEd email, and I will make sure to monitor that and to send it over to her. And also, uh, for our blogs, I did want to mention that Barb is one of the contributors to the Ascent blog, which you can access right from the homepage of our website. And I believe she said, I didn't have to bend her arm too hard to say that she would write a blog post based on this webcast, and she'll put a lot of the information that she's covered within that blog. Uh, for next week, so that will be posted up there as well for you to um, to view that. 